Uh, my name's Ryan. I work here at Braille. I'm going to be talking a little bit about, a lot of bit, about iOS uh, devices, which are Apple devices, which are the iPod Touch, the iPhone, and the iPad. Now, I just want to preface this by saying that the iOS Apple devices are not the end-all, be-all for people with low vision or blindness. Uh, it's all about the individual, and some of the other vendors that are here have great products that may be exactly what you need. This line of products, the iPhone, the iPad, and the iPod Touch, are new. Uh, they have a lot of possibility to help folks like you. Um, I've spent a lot of time trying to get to know uh, the devices, and I'll share with you a little bit about what I know, and we can, you can get a sense of what these devices can do. And if they're right for you, um, I'll tell you about some resources to explore them further. What I always tell people is that don't get one of these devices and try to do everything. If you get one of these devices, learn to do one thing, and do it well, and then learn to do a second thing and learn to do it well. Because none of us, I don't think in this room, unless anybody here is under 25, is what I call a digital native. We are all digital immigrants, right? So we grew up with either records or tapes, or for some of you, maybe even phonographs, who knows? But we, we are digital immigrants, so this stuff is not as intuitive to us as it is to a lot of the, the, the kids out there. I think I have a three-year-old and a one-year-old. They're not going to know what a mouse is. And my daughter will walk up to a TV and try to pinch zoom it and be like, why is this computer broken? It totally doesn't work. So you have to remember that um, you know, you give yourself some credit. Like These things take a little bit of time to learn, like any new technology does. And we're all immigrants to this technology. So learn to do one thing at a time. If you're going to choose one of these devices, I, I encourage people to consider several things. The cost, including accessories, because you can buy a device, but you can see I'm linked up with all these different things. Uh, you want a nice case. So you want to make sure that you're, you consider the true cost. Um, if you can just get away with a $100 magnifier, you probably just want to get away with a $100 magnifier. You don't need to drop $500 on an iPad and then another couple hundred on accessories. So consider the price. And what is the purpose of the device? Um, if, again, if someone just needs something for reading then, and a magnifier will do, that's great. But if a person needs something for reading, they want to do uh, also some, they want to do some email, maybe they want to look at pictures, uh, that purpose, those multiple purposes start to really lean towards these devices because they can do so much. So be clear about what it is you're trying to do when you think about buying these devices. Um, the user accessibility needs, this one I can break down pretty easily for people regarding the Apple devices. If you are partially sighted, I recommend the iPad because it's bigger. You can see here, it's a lot bigger than my iPhone, which is here in my hand. Uh, so if you're totally blind, just get an iPhone because you don't need all that screen space. They are exactly the same, except the iPad doesn't have the phone. Otherwise, they are exactly the same. So that's the general rule of the accessibility, is if you're low vision, I recommend an iPad. If you're totally blind, I recommend an iPhone. So this is where we get into the fun stuff. And for some of you that are on your iPhones already and have an iPhone or iPad, this may be a little redundant, but I want to go over all of uh, the accessibility features that are built in to the iPad. Um, and even before I do that, I'm just going to hold, hold up the iPad for those of you who do have vision. Um, actually look at the iPad itself. There's only one button on the iPad. So it's a very intuitive interface. And um, everything else is done on the screen. So this one button is, uh, is all you really need to, to worry about uh, in terms of the iPad. So it's a very simple, simple interface. The idea behind the iPad and iPhone is that it's intuitive. And I'll get in, I'll, let me just show you a little bit of that. So I push the one button and I get to the home screen. And, and this is my home screen and I get to show off my beautiful family. But let's say um, I want to go and check my mail, well then on the bottom here I can just touch the mail and it, it opens and I can just scroll through you know, all the different things that are in my, my inbox or, and then I push my home button and I go away. Um, these are all little, little different apps on my phone that I'll talk about in a little minute. But again, I just scroll my finger side to side to move between them and I touch them. It's very intuitive. Uh, it's, it's, it really is designed to to do what, you, what your brain says, well, if I did this, it should do this. And 99 times out of 100, it does. They did a really good job of making it intuitive. So built into every iPhone, iPod Touch, 
an iPad is native accessibility. So they have a great thing called VoiceOver, which I'm going to demonstrate, which is a screen reader. So those of you who, who use JAWS, it's built in to this, these devices. And there's no extra cost. It's, it's, it's right out of the box. It's there. There's also zoom magnification, which is built in. So you can turn these in. It's essentially like a CCTV or a magnifier. So it, and again, this is built in. This is native. I'm going to demonstrate some of these things for you. There's large text, which I'll show you. White on black, black on white. You can reverse the contrast. Um, you can control this with a Braille display. So those of you who are Braille readers, you, this is fully accessible to you, built in natively. I'll show you that. And there's dictation. So if you have to enter a text field on your device, like you want to enter your email address, um, you can just, when the keyboard comes up, push the dictation button and say, you know, Brian K. Honey at Gmail, which now you all have my email. So Remember how I said the iPad is totally intuitive and whatever you think it should do, it usually does? When you turn voiceover on, that all goes away. Because it's not designed for people with vision. It's designed for people who are blind. And it's not intuitive for people who have vision. So I'm going to show you that. So we, we changed this one setting so it's easy to turn voiceover on and off. Because once you turn voiceover on, it can be difficult to turn off if you don't know how. So we're going to go ahead and do a demo of voiceover. I'll back out of my PowerPoint, go to the home screen. In your settings, you can go to General, which you'll see on the left is highlighted in blue. You can select different ones. I'm going to select General. And at the bottom, you go to Accessibility. And this is where all those things are. So you can see, you can just turn VoiceOver on or off here by highlighting VoiceOver. And there's a switch that turns VoiceOver on or off. But what's really important to do, and if you're going through and you have an iPhone or iPad and you're doing this, I would do this now. General, Accessibility, triple click Home on the very bottom, and you Click it to voiceover. Now what this does, it means that every time I triple click, one, two, three, three clicks in a row on that one button, it turns on voiceover. And if I triple click it, it turns it off. And I do this because, as, as I said, when voiceover turns on, it can be really confusing to turn off. So um, I always tell everybody, set your triple click home to voiceover. It'll save you a bunch of headaches. So let's turn voiceover on. One, two, three. Landscape notes. VoiceOver on. So VoiceOver is on wherever I take my finger. Maps, videos, contacts, App Store, clock, camera, newsstand folder, Spotify. Now remember how I said that it's intuitive when you're using the iPad and it all goes away when you're using VoiceOver. You would think when you're using the iPad correctly, you just want to swipe newsstand folder to go to the next items. page, but it doesn't work that way. Turning on voiceover activates a whole new set of controls for people who have no vision. Uh, and, and it turns out a lot of those controls are actually fairly intuitive for them. So you actually have to use two of three. a three-finger three, three swipe. So um, we're now just news. going through Data chassis. some of our Pad Pro. apps. Big and browser. then I can go ahead and uh, open you know, a, a, a program or a file. So you double tap. Airs LA. And now it tells me that I'm in Airs LA, and you can use one of the controls you have is you can use two fingers. Airs LA. Heading. Top five podcasts. Search all podcasts. Selected. It's podcasts reading the entire category. screen to me My in order. About Airs LA. Donate to Airs LA. Contact us. So you can just have it read. This is really useful because if you go Home. to a web page and you want to. Chrome. Learn Ghost about tab. the web page. Here you will find useful documents about effectively using iOS voiceover. Material located on this page comes from Donnablee.com and is hosted here with permission from Donna Bross Deckley. Here you will find useful documents about iOS, iOS voiceover braille short, iOS voiceover braille shortcut commands BRF braille file. Link. iOS voiceover braille so again, shortcut it's commands just three braille file. iOS it's just voiceover reading. braille shortcut commands server error. Voiceover off. And you can see that's why you triple click home. It can get, if you're, if you're not used to it, it'll start just reading you all this information. You want to be able to turn it off. This is a really, 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 really great, amazing feature of the iPad. It takes some getting used to, takes some practice, and we're going to talk about some resources that we have to, uh, that allow you to, to, will allow you to learn this in a, in a nice environment, in an easy way. Um, but I want you to know that it's there because, uh, you know, a program like JAWS, 
um, it costs a lot of money, and it, maybe it's perfect for some people, but uh, if you're looking at you know, getting a new computer and you have to get a new version of JAWS, you may want to look at this technology because it's really, it, it's really neat. All right, so that's, that's voiceover. And now we're back into regular mode. And I want to show you guys the Zoom feature. How many of you guys have used a CCTV or a magnifier or Zoom text? Some of these features? Great. So you guys are really familiar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to the Brill Institute web page here. So this is, is, on the screen, fairly small. One of the things you can do, though, native, is you can just zoom in and make it really, really big. So essentially what you have, you can see how big that is. You have a, a magnifier or a, a zooming device um, built in, native. This isn't something you buy or something you purchase. It's just built in. So this is all here, and you can just scroll around, and you can read. These are all the things you can do, and, and, and you can just go through, and you can, you can control how far or how close you get. Um, and that's the zoom feature. That is built in to this device. So again, another really neat uh, tool that may be appropriate for you if you, you, know, you want to magnify the text just a little bit. A couple other features I want to show you. We're going to go back to our accessibility settings. So we're in general, accessibility. Uh, you can see there's a large text feature built in. Um, you can turn this on. I'll turn it all the way up. And in certain programs or apps, it'll make your font enormously large. So this is without zooming. I just turned on this, the large print. I don't love this one because it's not throughout the entire device. It's just on the native Apple uh, products that are in there. So we'll go back to here. I'll just show you the rest of these really quick. You can do uh, the invert colors. And you can't see it on there, but if you can see, because it doesn't project through, it changes, if you can see on the iPad here, it changes white to black, black to white, white to black, black to white. Um, and that's a nice thing if you need high contrast. You can find the setting that's right for you. It's good at night. The screen's not so bright. So again, these are all built in to your device when you get it out of the box. And uh, I know there's just a lot that I've thrown at you, but uh, I'm just trying to give you a quick overview since we don't have a ton of time so you know what's there uh, in, the, in these devices. So we're, we're talking about voiceover, the zoom text, the inverting of the colors, the large fonts, all this stuff is in there. So as I mentioned before, you can also, let's see this thing. What I'm going to show you is how to hook up a refreshable Braille display. How many of you in the room are Braille readers? Great, there's a handful of you who are Braille readers. So um, what's cool, and this is again built into these Apple devices, you can actually sync these devices to a refreshable Braille display. I've got one in my hand right here. This is the Refresher Braille 18. It's a small device. There's larger ones. It's got 12 cells of Braille, and uh, it's got a little joystick and then a Braille keyboard. And when I sync this to the iPad, uh, you then use the Braille display to control the iPad, and whatever is highlighted in VoiceOver, the way that you know, whatever I touched in VoiceOver was read to me, instead of reading it to you, It'll just display it in Braille. And this is really great because if you're a Braille reader and you're in public and you're reading your emails, you may not want to have them broadcasted you know, in the coffee shop to everyone about you know, what it, you know, your bank account number is. Thanks, voiceover. Good job. Um, so you can go ahead and turn on your refreshable Braille display. You can read your voice. You can read your emails. Uh, you can write emails. Uh, it, it's great for, for students. Um, you know, they, they can really keep up in the classroom and take notes and, and not be uh, having to listen to voiceover or be, be disruptive, have other students listen to voiceover. I'm not going to actually pair it up right now um, because it's, it's, it's not that it's too advanced. It just, um, it, it's just another thing I want you to be aware of. It's quite simple to do. You do it in accessibility. Um, now, for those of you who are low vision, I want to show you guys something here. Because obviously, you're not using the refreshable Braille display if you're, um, if you're not a Braille reader. Um, but one of the things that I found with the iPad that can be a little bit annoying, we'll go to the notes section here. This is the notes. Um, you can just, it's a note taker. Use this to take notes. You can just, you know, write whatever you want, and it shows up, and you can keep notes and email them to yourself. But you see this keyboard shows up on the bottom of the screen. That's the built-in keyboard uh, that, that you always use. And it's, it's a little smaller than a QWERTY keyboard. It's a little, there's nothing tactile about it. So if you have low vision, it can be tricky. Um, 
what they do make are Bluetooth keyboards that wirelessly sync up just like the refreshable Braille device does. And I use this all the time because it's easier to type, but you can put locator dots on this. Um, you can put stickers on it to identify. Makes typing in the interface a lot easier. So it's another way to um, make the device easier to use. This, this keyboard is not great. Um, um, I'll show you something that we're working on that's going to improve it. But in the, what I recommend to low vision users, especially people who use the computer currently, is to get, uh, get one of these and then you can just type like you've been typing, uh, and it really speeds up your whole experience on the iPad or iPhone. That's basically the, the ins and outs of the hardware, the device itself, you know, the, the accessibility that's built into it, and uh, some of the accessories that make it even more accessible. Uh, every device has voiceover. Every device has zoom te the zoom feature. Uh, every device has the large text, the black on white, white on black. That's all built in. Now, as I said, um, these devices can do anything you want, and the way they do that is through apps. Now, apps are pretty much, we all grew up, apps were something you had before dinner, right? And now they're this whole phenomenon. They're basically little tiny programs, like little pieces of software. Like Microsoft Word is a piece of software, and there's a, ver there's a version that's an app that's for this. And so they're little pieces of software that do specific things. So native to every iPad and or iPhone, the, this is a list of the apps that come with it. There's messages, calendar, notes, reminders, maps, contacts, mail, Safari, the camera and videos, FaceTime, which is a really neat, fun thing, iTunes, iBooks, and the App Store. So those are all built in to your device. Uh, you, you can't get rid of them. They're on there, and you'll use them a lot because they're pretty great. Now, there's also third-party apps. There's over 700,000 apps in the App Store that do things. Um, there's more than 10 billion total downloads from the App Store. The average price of a paid app is 364. 37% of apps are free. And the most popular app ever is Angry Birds. And if you guys haven't played Angry Birds, come find me afterwards and we'll, we'll play around. Um, so apps, apps allow you to pick a specific task and figure out how to do it. So I'm just going to demonstrate um, I'm going to demonstrate one app you saw a little bit of. Um, so this is an app that does a really, sp it's a good example because there's a really specific thing. So um, it's, a, it's a reader program, Airs LA. They have a website that some of you may use. This is a free app, and you open it, and you get the list of the podcasts. So we'll go to podcast by category, and we'll go to periodicals, and these are all the podcasts you can listen to. Well, let's see. Let's go with ESPN Magazine because I love sports. And this is the list of the things, and you can... Then pick. So now we're listening to this podcast. We'll just listen to it. Inspirational sports music. Get you fired up. Hello, and welcome to Selections from ESPN, the magazine brought to you by Airs LA. Great. So I paused it. So this app, this is all it does. There's just thousands of podcasts that you can listen to on demand anytime. And that's all this app does. You just download it to your phone from the App Store and for free, and then you have access to all of those podcasts. Now, that's, that's a great example of a very specific thing that an app does. I'm going to show you another app, the, our Braille Institute Vision Sim app. This app does one thing. It simulates eye diseases. So our, our uh, previous speaker was talking about macular degeneration. This allows people like doctors or yourselves to let folks in your you know, network of friends and family to understand, you know, this is what I see with macular degeneration. So we turn up the intensity, and you can see the loss of the central vision in the field. Oops, sorry. Lost my, my handle there. Uh, so that's, again, this is an example of w apps. They do one, there you go, that's, this is what this app does. It simulates eye diseases. It does just that one thing. It doesn't do email. It doesn't do note taking. It does one thing, and that's what that's what apps um, are are for. They do a specific specific thing. Some are more robust than others, but um, you know th they really drive the entire uh, device because they you know they they are what give you the functionality. So maybe what you need is a, a d an accessible device that can keep track of all your contacts. There's an app for that. Or a device that can 
you know, manage your calendar. There's an app for that. Or maybe you want a device that counts your calories. Or there's one for, uh, there's one that checks your blood sugar. No joke. You, uh, you plug in something to the port up here that my audio jack is plugged into, and then you do your blood test on the Bluetooth device, and it tells you what your blood sugar is. And actually, some health companies are now offering discounts because it will post your blood sugar to their network, and they know that you're checking your blood sugar. And if you do it regularly, it means you're healthier, and they'll give you a discount. So there's apps for everything. Here's a list of uh, apps that are good for low vision. You can see there's lots of magnifiers. There's all these amazing apps for low vision folks. Um, here's some apps that are really good for people that are totally blind. There's some more apps uh, that are great for people that are totally blind. Uh, this here's a li list of apps that are great tools for educators of people who have low vision who are blind. Uh, but you're probably feeling a little bit like this right now, going over and seeing all these apps. There's 700,000 apps, and there's no way to uh, really get a handle on them very well. So we, we've actually, um, for those of you who have an iPhone or iPad or think about using it, or think about getting one, we've put out, Braille Institute has a new app out called Via, which organizes and categorizes apps for you guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and just show you that really quick. Um, Via is another free app. It's in the App Store. You can just type in Braille Institute. You'll see the Vision Sim app. You'll see our telephone reader app. Uh, and then there's, there's Via. So um, you can search apps. Uh, you can see the apps that we recommend. I like to go to app categories because this is where you can really see the value. If you're looking for an app that does, um, let's say you want an app. Well, let's look for the, the blood sugar one. So we'll go to health and medical. And we'll go to medical, and then this is all the apps that do medical. And there it is right there, Glucose Buddy. And then so you can click on it, and you can see this is a description of the app. These are images, which are they take a second to load in the app. And then you can see reviews, so other reviews. So before you spend $10 on this app, you can learn about it. Or you could go ahead and discuss the app with other users and post your feelings about it. So. The world of apps, we've tried to simplify it because if you go on the App Store and try to find apps for low vision users or blind users, uh, they haven't done a great job of making that clear. Um, so we're trying to, we've created this, this tool that will help you do that. I just want to uh, highlight this again. Um, the, the, the iOS Apple devices are not the end all be all for each and every one of you. You want to find the right technology for your unique situation. So uh, what we're going to try to do here at Braille Institute is to make sure that we have the knowledge about this new series of devices that are going to be right for some of you. Um, but make sure that you find the right technology for your unique situation. It may be this. It may be something else. Um, but it's out there. Whatever your condition is, there's, there's technology out there that can help you. So uh, thank you for listening to me. I'm going to bring Courtney back up.